Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Today is a good, nice video for you. I think this is one of the final uh, functions tutorial videos I'm going to make on the topic. And this is going to be a fun one for you guys because I, I know every programmer deep inside wants to kind of split up the code. They don't want everything to look ugly and it's just want it to look nice, especially me. I like, I like when stuff looks nice. So remember our old function where we let's let's practice a little with with uh, reference and and pass by value here as well but let's just make our old uh, um, function here called add and we'll say int a int b okay and we'll just say return a plus b right simple function we're just gonna use this again we're gonna say std c out or let's use an integer int sum equals add uh, maybe 10 and then 20 all right so it's gonna give us 30 into sum and then we'll just print out sum and we will make a new line here okay so just like that now this will print out sum uh, the sum is like that obviously this is gonna work right this isn't gonna be any problem the sum is 30 end of story now imagine if we're making a bunch of functions because we want to make a calculator and and we kind of want to make a bunch of these functions and we'll talk about operator overloading and function overloading in another video soon that's actually another video I'm gonna make before I end this because it'll make it easier for the types but this video is solely focused on dividing up things so if you're making a uh, if you're making a kind of a um, math functions library, you wanna you wanna be able to use these later on. And, and you're saying you're making an add function, a subtraction function, and subtraction function is gonna subtract a from b. So I can also say int result equals sub subtraction. We wanna remove. Uh, we wanna do twenty minus uh, four or something like that like this and we want to print out uh, we want to print out that as well the result is result result right there now let's just run this so the result of the subtraction is 20 minus 4 which is 16 so we can kind of use we can make several functions for our calculator now in the perfect world you know that when you're using a calculator you don't always have integers. For example, in a division function, you want to use floats. And sometimes here you want to use floats as well. You might want to add something decimal plus decimal. You don't want to have to make another uh, function called add, add decimals or something like that. You don't want that. You want to make it simple for the user to just use add. And if they want, they can use 10.5 or just 10 or whatever but if you have an integer as a parameter obviously you can't now that's gonna be again a discussion for the next video but I'll just go ahead and tell you right now that this isn't as limiting as it might seem right now so don't worry too much about it just don't worry about it like how am I gonna make this into a real calculator blah 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 we'll get into that don't worry I'll show you all the tips and tricks how to make this a lot more dynamic than it is right now but again this video is about making stuff separate now let me just go ahead take these two functions that we created cut them out put them below here and create two prototypes so int add it has int a int b so this is a function prototype like we talked about int subtraction int a int b so these are the prototypes, these are the definitions, and we're using them. So this is step one in making this a little more uh, kind of, how do you call it, kind of separated and looking a little more clean. Now I'm going to make a new file, um, new item, a header file, .h file, and I'm going to call it, I'm just going to go ahead and call it math functions, okay, or my math functions, .h. I'm just going to create that. Here, as an empty file, you can use pragma once when you create a file like this, an H file. I'm going to explain what this does because I, I, I realize now that this is going to be a whole tutorial on separate files and stuff. We'll get deeper into this. Don't worry too much. But if you're using Visual Studio, 
specifically Visual Studio, you can use Pragma once and you don't have to think about it anymore. But if you're not, if you're using code blocks, what you want to do is you want to do if and if my math functions h define my math functions h and if like that that's all you have to do now don't worry too much about this again all this does is the computer when you include something for example here include iStream you will do that in several files several times several several times you don't want this the computer to kinda define everything again and again and again every time you include something you just want it to once go through it and store it and then never do it again so what this does is if this value is not defined by the computer I will define it and then I'll end if so what happens if this is run once this is obviously not defined in the beginning we'll define it and we'll end it we'll do anything in between and we'll end it next time this include is called in the same program we'll see that oh my math functions h is defined so we'll not do everything in here we'll just skip it all together and go just 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 ignore everything all right so this is a safeguard for not defining things multiple times doesn't have to be my math functions h this is just a kind of a uh, thing we programmers do when we're uh, writing this is just a key this could be key one but as long as this is the same thing key one when key one is not defined define key one and go on but you want to name it the same name in all caps underscore h for every h file you make anyway since I'm using code blocks I could just have used pragma once and that would be it but I'll use this for all you people uh, that don't use it uh, so let's just go ahead now what we did in our tutorial 19 was that we made these two functions here in the main file we don't want to do that we just want to cut these out now completely remove the prototypes and put them in here int add int subtraction they're in a completely different file now but it's important that it's a header file and not a .cpp file okay .cpp files are a little different we'll, we'll get to that in the classes tutorials but for now just uh, you should be fine with the h file now add and subtraction aren't really defined yet are they because we haven't included this file yet now I'm gonna include now remember when it's our own files and not standard libraries like this that are already created when it's our own files we use the quotation marks my math functions dot h the name of this file we're gonna include it so when we include it it's gonna go through you can see that it's not defined we'll define it and then we'll run all this code store it and end the if so this all of this will now be accessible to us in every file that we include my math functions dot h so add and subtraction are now accessible to us from this separate file if I run this we'll get the same result sum is 30 result is 16 and now you what you can do is you can keep adding functions here int uh, multiplication int a int b and just return a multiplied by b like that and now it will automatically be accessible to us here int product equals uh, multiplication see how it found it there because we included my math functions and it's defined in there so we'll multiply 10 by maybe 6 and we will print out the product the product is product there you go so this multiplication function will be called in this file here because we included my math functions dot h product is 60 now the ease the use of this is that this one file can be included in several different programs okay I can take another to old tutorial here for example and I can just include that file and we'll be able to use all these functions without rewriting them in that file in that program so this is kind of a first little little tiny step into how engines are made and like separated engines are made which you all you have to do is include them and then you can use them their functionalities in your own program 
without having to rewrite all that code for yourself. So that's kind of how string works. If I include string, it will give us a bunch of functions to help us, functions just like these that we defined in here, to help us use string. And whenever you include something, remember that from now on, include vector. We'll be including a class vector with its own functions. Now we can use vector, just like here. It's defined already in the vector file. So now we can use it. So that's kind of how that works. Just remember that and you should be fine. So a quick little intro to how files work. And I know I babble on a lot and I don't know how you guys have the patience to watch my videos. But for those of you who do, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something from this and I hope you'll have fun. I'll remove, I'll keep this file on GitHub so you can get it and you can just make your own file like this. Just remember the quotation marks and not these parentheses thingies when you're making, including your own files. And don't forget, please don't forget to use this if and define your file name underscore h or pragma once like this. I'll just comment it out. Pragma once if you're using Visual Studio. Okay. Visual Studio only like that. You can just remove this and Pragma also will work. But all you need is one of these. Anywho, just remember that and you should be fine. Um, and as always, I guess, thank you for watching. And I know this video, I didn't show you a lot of function examples and stuff, but we'll get to that later. Don't worry about it. But thank you again for watching. Take care. Keep learning. I love you, all of you. Just take care and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.